Good morning again. Today we are continuing on our series of bringing revival to your community, your country, to America in particular. And we're studying on putting on the whole armor of God because that's part of our armor, part of the kingdom of God. And we're, um, I'm sharing with you from my book, Feed My People Joy, Kingdom Living for End Times. Um, and today, yesterday we went over the belt of truth, today we're going over the breastplate of righteousness. And I also want to tell you to keep in prayer on August 19th, I have my first radio interview um, in McAllister for my book. So I'll hopefully get a copy of that and be putting it on my website. Okay, today we're going over the breastplate of righteousness. And that's from Ephesians 6.14. Now these pieces of armor are pieces of armor. They are... Um, powerful, they are weapons, and they are meant to prevent the enemy from destroying you, and one of them in particular is meant to attack the enemy. But today we're going over the breastplate of righteousness, and for me this is my favorite one, and also this is, I believe, God's favorite one, or his, okay, you need to be quiet there, see his name. This is the second time that bug has decided to come and make a lot of noise when I am doing this, and I'm not allowing it. He needs to be quiet while I'm doing this. Okay, because about the righteousness, I believe that that's one of the most important things because it says in the Word, it says um, the gospel of the kingdom will be preached and then the end will come. And, the, and then the scripture says, what is the gospel of the kingdom? The gospel of the kingdom is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. So you see, everything about God is righteousness is all right. In other words, everything is right in your life. You're healthy, you're prosperous, you have wisdom, you have protection, you have direction, you have peace. Everything about God is joy. Everything about God is filled with joy, righteousness, peace, and joy. So you are in right standing with God. <clears throat> you have righteousness, you have peace. That means nothing broken, nothing missing. And you have joy, and joy is strength. So righteousness, peace, and joy are part of the kingdom. Um, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added to you. So the breastplate of righteousness is really, really important. Okay. <clears throat> that and, and what that is, righteousness means that you know that you're in right standing with God. You see, um, when, Adam, when Adam and Eve sinned, it wasn't so much that they obeyed the devil or disobeyed God. What it was is, in disobeying God, they ate from the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil. <clears throat> now the tree of the knowledge of good and evil was, they already knew good because they knew God, but because they ate from the tree of the fruit, which means the, the knowledge of the fruit of good and evil, it was, it was experiential knowledge, not just head knowledge. So by eating it, they began to experience evil. <clears throat> Excuse me, by eating from the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, evil came on the earth. That's why God didn't want them to eat from the fruit of the tree because he knew when they ate from the tree that he would no longer be their God, that Satan would be their God. They would experience evil. So, <clears throat> while, when they ate from that tree, see, the, the sin wasn't disobeying God. The sin, that was a sin, but the major sin was eating from that tree. See, when you eat a peach, you experience a peach. When you eat an apple, you experience an apple. When you eat a plum, you experience a plum. When you eat an apple, you don't, this smells, tastes, and feels like a plum. And I just say an apple. No. So when they ate the fruit of the knowledge of good and evil, they ate evil. They experienced it. <clears throat> and Satan then became the Lord of this earth, having all authority and dominion that was originally given to Adam. And Adam was told to subdue the earth. That means because Satan was already kicked out of heaven, he fell to earth. He destroyed whatever was here. The earth was void and without power. And um, I'm not doing from my book. I'm just teaching here. Um, the earth was, was without void and power, and the Holy Spirit hovered over the earth, waiting to recreate. And they recreated earth for man and told man to subdue and rule because God wanted back his planet. And so when Satan came, Adam should have said, get out of here. You have no authority and dominion. You know, he'd be ruling and subduing. But instead, he doubted God's word. He doubted that God was telling the truth. He believed the devil was telling the truth. 
<clears throat> and he ate the fruit which made Satan the god of this earth. That's why there's, uh, that's why it's like this. Everything's dying and being destroyed. And um, God never created earth to look like this. Earth was beautiful. It never died. We were supposed to live forever. Anyway, that became, because of him eating the fruit and experiencing that evil, just like you experience a peach when you eat a peach, you have juice running down your mouth and it's so good and you smell and taste and feel the smushiness of the peach. Well, same thing with the fr fruit from the tree of life and death. Okay, so death came into the earth. Everyone born after Adam and Eve were born into death because like begets like. They ate the, from that fruit. Satan became the god of this world and everything af born after Adam and Eve were sinners. They were sinners not because they sin. They were sinners because through death, death came to all men. And that's a great revelation that has just become a revelation to me and is life changing. <clears throat> and I'll show you why later on. But that's why everyone is a sinner whether they're a baby or whether they've never sinned in their life. They are a sinner because everyone born after Adam and Eve were sinners because they were born in the likeness of the God of this earth which is Satan. That's why there's destroying tornadoes and weather and everything's going crazy. The earth is cracking up under the sin that it was never meant to hold. <clears throat> okay, so righteousness means that Jesus came and the penalty to get us out of the state of being sinners, the penalty was required. Um, God made the law and he said, you follow these things then you won't have to die and said I'll shed blood for you okay got it to my nose so he shed blood in the Old Testament and then Jesus came and instead of requiring every time man sinned they had to go and do a sacrifice Jesus came and became the final sacrifice for all of us for all of our sins and then everybody who received that sacrifice for the sins Jesus God, through Jesus, God became their God, and they were born again. See, when Adam sinned, they were born again into sin, from, from life to death into sin. And when Jesus came, we are born again into life. And that's why everyone who does not receive the free gift of Jesus, because Jesus is the mediator between God and man, Anyone who does not receive that free gift is still a sinner, whether they sin or not. And sinners sin. They're sinners because they were born of Adam, not because they sin. Sinners sin um, because they are sinners. <laughs> okay, I hope I haven't confused you. So, so then when Jesus came and you accept the free gift of Jesus paying the blood sacrifice for all our sins, past, present, and future, you become born again into righteousness. You become righteous. So you are then righteous, and, and, and you're, so everyone has to receive this on their own personal level to be born, right, be born righteous. Now, nothing, when you were a sinner under Adam and under Satan, there's nothing, no good works or nothing you could do to become righteous. Okay, now that you are righteous, it's by the blood of Jesus. You didn't earn it. You became righteous through the blood of Jesus. So... The sins that you do don't make you unrighteous, don't make you a sinner again. Because you didn't make yourself a, uh, a righteous to begin with. You didn't earn it. It was a free gift. It's through the blood of Jesus. So you are righteous because you accepted the free gift. You're a new creature. You're born again. Now the reason you don't want to sin is because every time you sin, it's clogging up your communication between you and God. You're not going to be walking in power. A third of you are going to be full of fear. You're going to be doing stupid stuff. You're not going to have abundant life and God wants you to have abundant life. So don't sin. Okay? And you, you just want to make sure you're going to go to heaven. You don't want to take no chances. So get hungry for God when you get born again and you are hungry for God. Your whole world is going to change. So that is what, how you become righteous. Now, you put on the breastplate of righteousness. And one thing is so important is you want to draw near to God with a conscience free without an evil conscience, and that's Hebrews 10, 21. It says, let us draw near with a true heart in a full assurance of faith, having our hearts sprinkled from an evil conscience. You see, if you're sin conscious, if you're always thinking, oh, I just messed up, oh, I'm no good, then you can't come to God uh, because you're going to be 
thinking, oh, I'm inferior, oh, I'm not good enough, oh, I'm not worthy. And that's not how God wants us to come. The blood of Jesus was good enough to make you righteous, okay? You don't have to earn it. It's by grace. It's, be, it's, it's stuff you don't deserve. It's, it's everything you don't deserve because Jesus paid for it, okay? So, you have to renew your mind. We were, the new man is created in righteousness and holiness. Okay, so if you're sin conscious, you're not going to be able to come to God. You're not going to be able to do signs, wonders, and miracles. You're not going to be able to heal people. You're not going to have gold dust, uh, gemstones. You're not going to have supernatural visitations. You're not going to be able to go to those places because you're going to be thinking you're inferior, that you're, you're, um, you sinned, you're not good enough, you're going to feel guilty, you're going to be sin conscious, you're not going to feel worthy. So God does not want you to come to him that way. <clears throat> um, Romans 5, 17 says, For by one man's offense, death, that's Adam, uh, death reigned by one. Much more, those which receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness will reign in life by Christ Jesus. So you see, when you receive the gift of righteousness and grace, you reign. You're no longer under the law, but you're under grace. <clears throat> and be found in him not having his own righteousness, which is by the law. Um, Okay, through the law, but that which is, he has the righteousness which is through the faith in Jesus Christ, the righteousness which is by, of faith by, um, which is of God by faith. Okay, so righteousness is so important that you understand that you are righteous, not because you earned it or because you do anything, but accept the free gift from Jesus, which the blood of Jesus makes you righteous. So, my name is Robin Bremer, and that's it for um, the, the breastplate of righteousness. And I'm out. You're watching Walks with God.